Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Monster Prom. I'm the Outback Out. I'm Hot for Justice. I'm Yin and Yang. And I'm Ching. And we are once again out looking for some secret endings. Let's get in there and do some stuff. Single player, One because player. We're, we're just trying to work our way through it quickly. We're actually going to go to the second term today. Oh, we're doing second term. Okay. Yeah, we're doing second term today because we got a, a special item that we want to try to get our hands on. Um, except in the event that we randomly get a secret ending that, uh, you know, we won't, we, would, we don't have an option of otherwise. Ah! Number one. Oh, or that. I just closed my eyes. Alrighty. So we, we know all this stuff. We're looking for a little bit of money, so hopefully we can find something. Uh, wait, does this one have one of those? Mission of the sun in order to invent the sun to the party of its life. I almost feel like that second answer should get us the sun puncher ending. <laughs> but. I think it's the first one. Invest okay. Profitable yeah, business profitable. sounds good. Bye. Produce him. Okay, we are getting what we need right now. Instant hit sounds like. Uh, wait, which one was the. Yeah, I think the top one. That's a that's a uh, marketable one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we're we're doing good. We're we're doing well for this. We probably will have to go to uh, the library once. To just oh, we should say we're 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 trying to do that whole. If we get a like a random ending, we're hoping we can game the system by choosing Polly and Liam, because they each have a random ending, but they have a shared random ending as well. So we feel like that would game it a little bit to... Because we have five random endings that we have not gotten yet. Uh, top ten drinking text to regret. That definitely sounds like a poly thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And next we'll find the Liam thing. Gar, fanfic, bard, automaton, good boy, gun hap. That's Zoe. Wait, is... Is Liam not on here? Hmm. He might not be. Weird. Mm. Oh, gun haver. Damien. You like you some Damien? Oh, because there's also the sun puncher. That oh, that's true. true. That's, yeah. We have... Yeah, Liam was not an option at all. Interesting. Mm. Too bad for anyone who wanted that. Yeah. No yaoi endings today. Nope. Nope. Still a possibility of the Wilkinson, the Sun Puncher, and an orgy, though. Yes. Alright. Excuse me. Alright, we almost have yeah, enough. We need a little bit of money. How much do we need? Ten bucks. Okay. So hopefully we get some and don't lose any. Everybody knows the library. And afterwards, you see Polly and Damien eating some delicious-looking cookies. Do we often see them teamed up together? No. no. This could be something new for us. Mm -hmm. All right, let's let's go, me. Oh God, you talk hey. so much lately. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, would you like to buy a cookie to benefit the agents of chaos? I'm trying to get my destructive capitalism badge. Okay, yeah, I know. I haven't seen this one. All proceeds go directly to the uprising of chaos over order, and it's tax deductible. As I was setting fire to a nursing home the other day, I heard a voice echo so loudly in my head that my teeth rattled. It told me of an ancient order, and it was described to me in a thousand voices. Blood trickled from my ears. This sounds and like it would be a secret ending, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and then the voices gave me a badge for harassment of the elderly. And I earned my first badge for being unable and unwilling to stop partying. My goal is to get enough badges to make a bikini out of and then wear it in nothing else everywhere forever. My goal is to get enough badges that Polly makes a bikini out of them and wears it in nothing else everywhere forever. I wonder what badge we should go for next and what hijinks we can get into to earn it. You know what's crazy and chaotic? Being single and partying forever. Destroy the institution of marriage. 
chaos is always better with some sensible agony. Replace all the water in the school with swarms of mosquitoes. Okay, this doesn't seem like it's a secret of any kind. Smart. Second one's smart. Second one is smart. Top one is fun. We don't yeah. seem to be very fun at all. No. Let's go with the second one then. It's creative. 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 Either way, still better than. Worked. <laughs> All right. I mean, nothing is quite as chaotic or miserable as being covered head to toe in bug bites. And I have ghost skin, so there's no way I can accidentally be caught in the middle of this. Yeah, and if any of those little motherfuckers try to come near me, I'll just torch them. Miserable Minache badge, here we come. Go team. The three of three you. Oh, that's you. Yeah. The three of you immediately set to work, draining all the school's pipes of water and funneling in swarms of live mosquitoes. Instead, yay! Yeah. Students trying to take a drink of water suddenly force them find themselves with a mouthful of winged parasites, stealing the blood from their tongue and gums. That Yuck. sounds like the worst. Yeah. yeah. Students sit down on the toilet only to have their genitals accosted by thirsty pointy proboscis. Oh no. Uh, no. This is terrible. This is the worst timeline. <laughs> Students go to wash their hands and are then unable to use them for the rest of the day because of how swollen they are from dozens and dozens of itchy, awful bites. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like one of the many plagues. Ugh. Yay! We're heroes. Ugh. Order motherfucking obliterated. What a delightful prank for everyone involved. Later in the week, you see Damien and Polly proudly displaying their miserable minutia badges, Agents of Chaos, one, order, zero, and you gain two fun, one, creativity. Jesus. Okay. So, it's time to buy a little something, I think. Yep. Let's go meet that cat. Kitty. Money and blah 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 blah. Okay, where is it? It's not here. It's not here. Wait, what's that scroll? Is it a scroll? Yeah. Fake title of nobility. Uh, that's not a random ending. We could do that. It isn't that the one from Belanda? I think so. Yeah. Which would give us all of the Miranda routes, I believe. Damn, I was hoping to do some weird drugs today. I was too. Unless we come back later? I mean... We could. I say just do it. Okay. Yeah, we might as well get it done and hope for the best. Yeah. Alright. Alrighty daddy. Change of plans. Yep. Always keeping us on our toes. This game. Okay, so. So let's go get some fucking charm. Yep. Blah 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 blah. Later, you come across Damien and Vera in a hallway, nonchalantly holding a locker shut with all the. Okay, we've seen this. Blah, blah, blah. Fluffy, fluffy. Do, 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 do. I think they're like gonna put a tracking device in this guy's head or something. Uh, uh, you know what pets love? Hardcore death metal all the time to drown out their noises. If you love something, set it free. Just to implant a tracking device inside. That sounds like a smart thing. Yep. So smart. Yeah. Hits. Mmm. Blah, 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 blah. Heart points with Vera. <laughs> okay. Shall we go to be get more? Yeah, sure. Where are we going? Charm. Jim. Oh. Jim. Jim. <laughs> okay. Blah, 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 blah. Checking out your fake nobility title, you think that there might might have been a good reason to buy it, but you fail to remember. Nah, it was probably just to see what would happen if you owned a fake nobility title. <laughs> you reflect on how that's your main drive to buy basically anything, to see what will happen if you own a thing. <laughs> it actually oh. is. Yeah. yeah. 
So you just stand still, waiting for one or several of your classmates to suddenly appear to comment on your shiny new thing. <laughs> just wait. Any moment now. Okay. Mm, any moment now. Greetings, Green. <laughs> right I on cue. I help but notice you've acquired a new thing. I love acquiring new things. It is one of the key activities to assert your wealth. Oh, a nobility title? Yeah, a real nobility title, you confirm. Maybe trying too hard on the real part. Finally, another student of my stature in this vulgar school. Now we can do noble things. Yeah. Can we? Noble things? Like leading a selfless life dedicated to help the disenfranchised? Like doing nothing our entire lives because the excess of wealth of our higher upbringing allows us to dissociate from the notion of responsibility. Wow. Damn. Oh yeah, the other noble thing. Ah, uh, the joys of excess. Give me a second. I will summon the Merc Kingdom Army so we can use them for something especially ludicrous and unnecessary. Um, my royal app is not working. It isn't letting me call the army. Dang. Suddenly, the floor cracks and water starts to pour madly like some kind of geyser. Oh no. The silhouette appears behind the Tower of Water. Don't even think of abusing my army again, Miri! Oh no. Oh god, who's gonna be this person? In. You want to take uh, it? Sure. Oh, yes, little sis. This is no good, Green. This is my older sister, Belinda. This is my older sister, Belinda. That's no way of doing a royal presentation. Haven't you ever told your friends about the Vanderbilt crown properly? Father wouldn't be happy to hear about this. Okay, okay. Don't tell Dad. I'm going to introduce you to Belanda. So is this like a Starfire Blackfire situation? Probably. Maybe? The whole lineage, Miranda. Ugh, fine, fine. The Merc Kingdom King and Queen have no less than five daughters. The five jewels of the Vanderbilt crown. <laughs> the first daughter is Lalanda Vanderbilt, heiress to the crown. The master diplomat of the Merkin court, she commands with wisdom. <sighs> All right, second daughter, the second daughter is Amanda Vanderbilt of the Modest Beauty. The high priestess of the Merkin's new religion, she commands with love. The third daughter is Belinda Vanderbilt of the Merciless Fist. The chief commander of the Merkin's armies, she commands with fear. And let me take care of this one, sis. Uh. And the fourth <laughs> daughter, Miranda Vanderbilt, of the obnoxious entitlement. Well. She wears a crown, so I guess that makes her a princess too. <laughs> Stop it, Belanda. I'm just speaking the truth, sis. Before it escalates, you point out they said the king and queen had five daughters. We don't speak of the fifth one. But we should speak about the fact that I don't have my own cool royal portrait. I want one. That's how it always is with you, isn't it? You want, you want, and you want. Well, you're not getting everything you want just because you want it, Miri. Look at us. We take responsibility for our realm. We don't parade the Vanderbilt crown like an accessory. We serve it. And now look at you, using our soldiers, serps, and resources as if they were your personal toys. It's not about what the Mer Kingdom can do for you, but about what you can do for the Mer Kingdom, Miranda. I'm kind of on Belanda's <laughs> side, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, really, Miranda, tell me, what can you do for the Mer Kingdom? Don't you want a fancy portrait? Earn it. I, uh... 
You catch Miranda glancing at her sides, as if hoping for a surf to be around there in order to take on to, take on to this task. Luckily, your insane devotion for her kind of ma for her kind of makes you a surf, which you now realize might not be a healthy or bene nor beneficial for you. Regardless, you take on the task and say, "Ha, fool that you are, Belanda! Let me re present to you the fourth daughter of the Vanderbilt crown." Miranda Vanderbilt, of the very nice hair, keeper of the best hairstyles in all of the Mer Kingdom, she commands with style. Miranda Vanderbilt, of the commanding voice, very good at asking stuff from other people and treating them like surf. She commands by commanding. By commanding? Okay, I think the first one is a charm and the second one is yeah. a boldness. So let's go yeah. with charm. I do have very nice hair. Thanks, Green. Problem solved. Can I have my fancy portrait now? No, Mary. Fuck. <laughs> this is the whole issue. Stop <laughs> demanding stuff and start earning it. <gasps> uh, earning? Yeah. You can't live your whole life with the shtick of being the pretty pink princess and thinking that that entitles you to demand whatever you want from whoever you want. What's wrong with being pink and pretty? Don't bully me. I don't give a fuck about that. Damn, your idea of femininity is pink. My idea of femininity is having sharp teeth. Everything goes with that. The problem is the princess part. You focus too much on the idea of being a helpless damsel and too little on what really means to be a ruler. It's disgraceful. Yeah. You have no purpose other than giving orders and making your inferiors miserable. She got a point. Yeah. Honestly, you would be more useful as sushi, sis. Oh. Damn. 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 I know you came from underwater, but them some burns. I did the line. Yeah. I don't want you to be sushi either. So why don't you start doing something? Anything with your life. You need to develop some drive, some motivation. Come on, I trust you, Mary. I'm sure this is just the first of three acts that will lead you to a meaningful change. Maybe. Yes, I can do that. Huzzah! She leaves, running in a very cute and enthusiastic way. <sighs> My little sis, finally learning some depth. I'm so proud. And you, piece of tuna, what are you looking at? Go help Miranda in her journey. God knows if she has no help, she will end up sashimi, the poor thing. Serve her well, or the only date you'll score will be with my cleaver. I'd help her myself, but war is calling my name. See ya. She rips the fabric of space and time with her cleaver and leaves through some kind of portal. <laughs> Wow. Sorry, is she also the interdimensional prince? Maybe. Oh my god, I'm so right for once. We got some boldness. Three boldness for taking upon the most task this school has ever seen, giving Miranda some depth. Good luck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really? Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we're on the Miranda route. Yeah, not my Could favorite thing, her? but... Should we just go hang with Coach or something? Whatever. I mean, we don't yeah. really have any need to talk to people. Yeah, we don't need heart points. Nope. You're about to take the first bite of your delicious cafeteria lunch when Coach appears out of nowhere. Stop! You can't eat that! You're not warmed up yet! Okay, this is like yeah, the working your jaw that. thing. Mm -hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Playing with your food, specifically playing football with your food. An absolutely ridiculous number of push-ups. I think we did push-ups before, but I don't think we did the, food, the football one. Why don't we try that? You're right. Okay. Coach helps you set up your peas and mashed potatoes in a classic football. Ah. Oh, sorry. Perfect. Now the food will get all warmed up so it's ready to take the nutrition all the way to your end zone. The end zone is your stomach and eventually your butt. Okay. Your food throws down in the your food throws down in the most intense football game ever. It all comes down to a controversial call by the broccoli ref. You turn around to find the whole rest of the cafeteria watching your game and betting on the results. Oh, we made some money. Mm -hmm. They're even more in 
entertained when you command all the players to dive into your mouth. You gain four fun. Okay, we have fun. You. Yeah. Fun. Okay. I know we'd normally go for charm, but I'm actually thinking maybe we should go to the bathroom. Okay. Pooping. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay. Hi. Hey, Green. Have we Ready seen this be app before? Fly? What? Was there like an update? She I'm looks like, cute. I'm noticing like Polly also had like a, a kind of a new outfit. Oh, these They're... are her summer clothes. Oh, yeah. I don't remember these that well. Mm. Eh. Hi, Green. Ready to be my squire on my quest to games and drive? Please don't answer that. I phrase it as a question, but in reality, it was a command. I tend to mix those two up. Great. So, I thought the best thing to do was to ask for advice from the person with the most drive and motivation I know. Vera? Vera. Oh! Ah. <laughs> Yay! I saw I, I still don't get why you wanted to, me to hide under this box until you said my name. It was a very big box. Yeah. To create some suspense, silly. Oh, okay. But it wasn't just that. You see, my older sister Belanda has challenged me to find a purpose if I want to get my own fancy portrait. And you're the person with the most purpose ever. You're always so intense. It's like you're unapologetically yourself. I admire it. Oh, that's sweet. Also, I am myself. You really know a lot, huh? I do, yes. But please, now it's about me. The thing is, Belinda told me it wasn't enough to have pretty hair or to give orders to people. I need to do more than that. Really? I do think your hair is very pretty, and I admire how good you are at being bossy. I dream of being the boss of the Eighth Circle of Hell someday, and I could surely learn from you. But all right, let's help you find your motivation! Yay! I have the ultimate trick to do that, asking, your, asking you, what motivates you, Miranda? I don't know. That's a problem. Oh no, yeah. that was my best trick. I'm lost now. Eat gads. Wait, something has come to mind. You see, the best way to discover one's true self is in the face of danger. When I face danger, I punch it. Because you see, my true self is my fists. And that's because my, my main drive is my anger. Which reveals that my inner motivation is to reclaim the eighth circle of hell. Obviously. 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 I guess. <laughs> so we need to force you into a da into a great danger that pushes you to reveal your inner strength. Here! Dahlia grabs a wooden plank from God knows where and puts it in front of Miranda. The plank has a very evil face painted on it. Miranda, fight! Eesh. Oh no, this evil <laughs> looking... <laughs> Sorry. Oh no, this evil-looking plank is just too much for Miranda at this point on her quest. Unless being in a panic is her true self, she's failing at this. But maybe, with a bit of help, she can find strength from within. But what can be the real source of her motivation? Miranda, just make cute eyes. Very cute eyes. Miranda, fight the plank with the, with the inner power of this chainsaw. Bold. <laughs> yeah, that chainsaw is definitely bold. <laughs> You gave Miranda the chainsaw you were carrying with you for emergencies. She obliterates the wooden plank. Huzzah! Miranda, such mastery, such finesse! Now it's clear, isn't it? It is? Yes! The plank represented your inner insecurities and your inability to find a purpose. But that chainsaw represents... I guess my purpose? Or maybe your motivation. Your motivation to destroy any wooden plank of your life. Oh, or maybe it represents a chainsaw. Really? Maybe. 
You might be mixing metaphors at this point. What's clear is that you can now face all your issues and life obstacles with your inner chainsaw. Right. But this chainsaw is not very inner. Look, it's in my hands. Does that mean it's like, I don't know, an outer inner chainsaw? What? <laughs> Ugh, my head is starting to hurt. Mine too. Uh, that sounds like an issue. An issue I could solve with my new outer inner chainsaw. No. Miranda, no. It's not. <laughs> Miranda, yes. Good idea! <laughs> no, bad idea. You grab the chainsaw from Miri's hands and throw it as far as you can. You hear some screams, but those are not your problem anymore. <laughs> Thanks, Green. I must admit all these metaphors were giving me a headache, too. Yes, grabbing stuff and throwing it is the outer inner chainsaw of headaches, I think. No, careful! That sounds like another metaphor. Miranda slaps Dahlia. <laughs> Oof, that was close. Indeed. Let's get some ice cream, and later you can join me while I give an order to execute a hundred poets to keep the murking and safe from metaphors. Oof. That sounds like a plan. You have an accom you have accomplished nothing. But those two seem happy with themselves, so huzzah to that. Everyone gains three fun from having such a good time. Everyone but the hundred poets, they definitely don't have any fun. Onward! And upward! We can go to the bathroom again, or to the no, gym, we can't. or no, we can't. to literally anywhere, I guess. No bathroom. I know no bathroom. There's also the gym option, or, you know, wherever. Hmm. Hmm. Let's be a dragon. Okay. <laughs> That day while rehearsing for the class play, and who cares? Wow. Rehearsals for the play are going as smoothly as they do at any school populated by monsters. As a good castmate, you're more than happy to run lines with Vera, and not just because she looks great in her costume. And for doing that with a moldy grapefruit, and with my mother no less, you must die. And then the director said I could improvise any kind of assassination I want. Now I'm someone with a reputation for knowing a thing or ten about murder. So I don't want to just go with some run-of-the-mill knife through the eye kind of deal. What kind of unexpected on-stage murder would really knock me dead, so to speak? Bore them to death. A complicated killing machine involving jello pudding and a, ce a ceiling fan and a chrysanthemum. That sounds creative. Yeah! What does the first one sound like? Um. Not fun. Not fun or money. Is it smart? I don't think it's charm either, and so that eliminates our other lower stats. It might be smart, or I, does it really matter? We don't need anything from Vera. Yeah. That's yeah. Kind of the first one. Smart. Yes, of course. No one would be expecting me to go metaphorical with it. The whole audience will be waiting for some overdone drawing and quartering or a sensible blood drawing draining. And then I'll hit them with an idiom come to life right before their very eyes. I can already hear their horrified gasps when I begin my lecture. Here, let's go back a line. And for that, you must die. Prepare to be regained regaled by paint drying through the ages foul villain. Starting from the time cave monsters first began to paint on walls, people have been forced to watch paint drag. After they smeared the blood of their enemies into obscene symbols, they would wait for the air. 
Even though it's just a rehearsal, you can already feel the life force being sucked from you by the boringness of Vera's lecture. Mm -hmm. Right before you pass out from the dullness of it all, you see Vera wink at you gratefully. Yes, worth it. Vera's admiration is always worth losing a few minutes of your life to the darkness of blacking out. Which, of course, you do. But you also gain two creativity and one smart. You got some good stats going. Yeah. Who's here? Should we chill with the wolf pack? Sure. Who knows what yeah. we could get out of it. Puff yourself up, hoping to look so big and tough and sporty as possible as you take your seat next to the wolf pack. Hey, you. You know what it means that you took a seat at the wolf pack's table. Well, it probably means that you don't care that much about defining which love interest you're pursuing and or that the table was already taken. It means you're, in, you're now one of us. One of us. One of us. One of us. Don't get us wrong, the second lunch is over, we 100% go back to hating you because you're so weak and not at our level, brah. But for now, you might as well enjoy living your best werewolf life to the max. Sometimes we like to stick with just classics, blanketly hating all other monsters, but other days, we like to be aggressively inclusive. And you caught us on an aggressively inclusive day. Yeah, bro. So, what classic werewolf activity would you like to do in the, these brief, glorious moments in which you get to be part of the T-E-A-M-E? -E? Hmm. Correcting their spelling of team probably isn't a classic werewolf activity. Better go with something more like... Howling at the moon or practicing Ikebana, the ancient Japanese art of floral arrangements. Just super wolfy. Howling at the moon might be boldness. Okay. We love howling at the moon. Well, flirting with the moon is even better. Okay, it's a charm, charm thing. Let's go outside and flirt with the moon right now. Oh, wait, now. this is a prank. Oh, jeez. You're, out you're outside where the moon is visible in broad daylight, because why the fuck not? I remember <laughs> this. They kick things off, telling the moon that you're sorry to bother her, but you just wanted to say how much you appreciate the way she controls the tide so gracefully. When the wolf pack steps up and continues in the charming yet respectful tone you set. Hey man, is there a mirror in your pocket because I see myself in your pants? Lol, never mind then. Hey moon, are you an astronaut because... Are you an astronaut because your ass is out of this world? And I can see myself in that too. Actually, so are you an astronaut with a mirror in your spacesuit. Suddenly a piece of paper wafts down from the sky. It appears to be a letter and it reads, Dear Green, thank for you respecting my boundaries and not using a crude opening line before we've even gotten to know each other. I'm very flattered and appreciative. Thank you again, the moon. Huh, I guess maybe it's a good idea to be respectful to women and treat them as people, even when sometimes they're the moon and not people. Yeah, being respectful of women is, a, is the best. Let's get some pussy by being considerate and respectful. Woo! <laughs> and with that, they're off. You hear laughter and look over to see Vera and Polly deep in conversation. A letter from the moon. Classic. Can't believe they fell for it. The only thing better than a good prank is that someone else's <laughs> expense is a prank that also teaches valuable lessons about being slightly less douchey. Ah, well, that makes way more sense than the moon actually writing a letter, but you still gain four charm for not being disgusting. Yeah. Now they're equal, though. Yes, but we get to go somewhere and choose which one we're gonna use. I'm thinking uh, bathroom. Okay. Bathrooms! Pooping! Stuff. <laughs> You spot Miranda running up to Belanda very enthusiastically. You know for a fact that you've accomplished jack shit while trying to find her some depth. So, you're pretty sure this is about to be a train wreck. You inch closer just in case. Wow, well, look! I did it! You did what now? 
I found my motivation in my inner self. Look! Miri, this is just two halves of a wooden plank. You realize it means nothing, right? But, but I faced the danger. And, and I found like my true inner self. You know, like what Dalga said. Oof. Okay, I see. Look, Dahlia might be my mayhem girl, and I have mad respect for that bitch, but she might not be the best one to be giving foolproof advice, sis. Oh, right. So this doesn't count as self-growth? Miranda is once again innocently holding up the two halves of the wooden plank, but Landa grabs them and throws them away. No! My personality! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we need to do something about this. You might be clueless half the time, but you're my sister and I love you to death. Oh god, that feels like it's going somewhere. And we will help you to bring glory to the Mer Kingdom. Huzzah! But how? Is there, I don't know, a self-growth surf? A surf growth? Hmm. The land of slaps, Miranda. Listen, bitch. For once, can you not run to the easy solution and surf and shit? To become bloody majestic for real, you need to connect with yourself. Who are you? I'm really excited to know the real Miranda, you know? And apparently, trying to define you by what you love hasn't worked so far, since your major hobbies are being rich, entitled, and pretty. So maybe we should approach this differently. Let's go to the Vanderbilt. Let's go the Vanderbilt way with terror and spite. Let's find new things that you might love by focusing on the things you hate. The air people? <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> I hate having to think hard about things. Ugh, <laughs> oh, this is going nowhere. But maybe with a gentle push. People that are not millionaires. You, who would decide not to be rich and pretty like you? Such sketchy life choices can't mean anything good. The air people! Yes! I want to go with okay, the air people. It has to be the air people. 100% the air people. Ugh, air people. Fucking air people. <laughs> but wait! Miranda the racist. So you feel like your true yeah. calling might be to obliterate them? Miranda the genocidal. Hmm. Yes, but not with armies. That's kind of your thing, Belle. It can be yours, too. Hey, piece of tuna. Did you know my sister here is not that bad at battling? I did not know that. Before going into this helpless princess phase, she was more than okay with the spear, the trident, and the... Epe? Epe? I don't know. Epe. Epe. Nah, that's fun, but not that much fun. I want to invade them in my own way. Like, like, what if I invaded their filthy sky with huge phallic structures made of concrete? You mean, like skyscrapers? Yes! I will scrape the filthy sky and the filthier air people with my creations. So she's gonna be I'm an architect? An architect? <sighs> okay, whatever. This is better than nothing. Here, have an architecture book. Oh, I like these. So I can make all of these by architecture? <laughs> yes, and if you make enough of them, you might also make all these homeless people you hate so much disappear into their new homes. That actually sounds enticing. This is actually good. Yeah. So now I have death? Dunno, sis. But at least you have some direction, and that's wonderful. Change doesn't need to happen overnight. You don't need to find your life's purpose tomorrow. But starting to explore options is a great start. That's good advice. And it makes me proud. Huzzah! She's gonna go make the fountainhead. Huzzah indeed. Oh no. <laughs> uh. 
They leave, chatting joyfully. For once, you don't chase Miranda to ask her on a date or something or anything. She seems to be having a good time with her sister, and sometimes it's good to put your thirst aside. You feel very good about yourself, so you still gain three smarts. And the okay. monster prom draws near, so I'm thinking we're going with Miranda, right? Yep. Yeah. Let's do it. Prom? I don't know. I need to focus on this architecture thing. Belle was right. Being thrilled about something is actually delightful. I have this weird feeling like I want to know more about this. And I want to learn about it myse by myself. No serfs. It might be true that I lived a bit too blindly in my comfort zone. I'm really grateful to Belle and also to you for helping me. This is nice, but also a bit of a bummer. But before she can continue, a geyser explodes from the floor. <laughs> hey, sis, I heard all that. You really like the book I gave you, huh? Indeed. I'm even skipping prom, as it was another foolish excuse to keep myself from reflecting on my issues. I'm proud of you, Miri. But also, no. It's great that you're trying to explore your truth, whatever it leads you wherever it leads you. But there's nothing wrong with also having some fun. Really? Then in that case, I'd love to go. Oh, I'll work well. Sure, take this piece of tuna to prom. Okay, is that like a racist thing? Or are you saying we're a snack? What's going on here? I'm, I'm <laughs> getting like some mixed way. signals. Whatever you want. But I'm not sure if he will be capable of taking on all the greatness of the Vanderbilt family on the dance floor. I guess we'll see. They leave, having a pleasant conversation about regal dance moves and court intrigues. Prom night comes, and it's a night to remember. You and Miranda have the best time together. But that's just the start. You support Miranda all along the way on her adventure into self-growth. She makes choices and mistakes, and it's all wonderful, and it takes time for her to find her true calling, but it's fine. She even challenges herself in other ways, like reducing her use of surfs by half, getting into origami as a hobby, and even learning how to eat by herself. Oh! Good for her. Her family notices. The Vanderbilt crown might reign with an iron fist, but they understand that the immense power they hold comes with an equally huge responsibility. Even if they are no strangers to terror, massacre, and intrigues, they still hold themselves to the standards of the Vanderbilt greatness, and Miranda finally understands. And you are also there because you love Miranda, and love is also about being there for good loved ones on their own personal journeys. Aww. That's nice. Yeah. It's an actual Miranda ending I like. Look, look how close we are to being done. Yeah. We're like 12 away from, from beating the game. Look how many outcomes we have not seen, though. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of good. That means we have a higher success rate, I think. Yeah. But still. Most diplomatic smile. All right, let's see if we get a, a Polaroid at the end and a, um, let's see if we unlock it. I don't think there's anything else really to unlock except for like- Miranda, wait, 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 wait. Oh wait, Miranda used her vast knowledge of serfs to get a job handpicking the best serfs for other people. I thought she was an architect. Unsurprisingly, she ended up leaving her serfs to do the work. Okay. Bah. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. She's the ghost of Christmas past. Hey, cool. At one point, I was the ghost of Christmas present. I was the ghost of mm -hmm. Christmas past. Were you anything? I was the ghost of Christmas. Yeah, future. Yeah, did you do anything? I was Jacob Marley. <laughs> uh, no one knows what we're talking about, but you might eventually. Yeah. I don't. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything really left to unlock other than, say, the narrator and the guide to the Gorgon thing with Valerie. Mm. Everything else is really just items we've already unlocked or random routes that we haven't gotten yet. So, yeah. Moving forward, maybe we'll get the maybe we'll get the drug thing next time, or we'll go for some of the witches or. 
any number of possibilities. I mean, uh, obviously, again, anytime we get a random route that shows up, we gotta go for it, but... Until we see that happen. I don't know. John Bailey was the cultists? I know that. There were just so many names. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think we'll end on? Do you also have the same images? I don't think we'll end on any image. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably right. I mean, we already got the the end picture that we could get. That's true. Yeah. Oh. 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 oh a special thing for like the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Unlock Ooh, some images. Is. Well, we'll see you guys next time, and maybe we'll trip on some balls. Bye bye. 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 Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and feel free to check out some of our other gaming videos, our weekly podcast, Anime Yay or Nay, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!